All right, guys, today we are in Andover, Ohio, eating this. This is Marion's first time ever having the best pizza on the face of the earth. This is Covered Bridge Pizza from Andover, Ohio. Look at that, guys. What the heck? Oh, <laughs> it is so delicious. We just left Tappan. We drove about three hours today to get here. And this is a little town that I grew up in, and I'm gonna give you guys a tour of it tomorrow when it's not raining, which for you will be in just about two seconds. People always told me I need someone like you, someone who gets me and someone who's cool, yeah. And I like the way you are, and I want it all. All right, guys, this one right here totally tugs at my heartstrings. This building right here on the corner is such a staple from this period in my life. So this is the street that we lived on right down here. We would ride our bikes down here. We would go right up to this little gas station here and we would get this gum called gum dingers. It was like these, uh, I'm thinking they were kind of like blow pops, like they had the gum in the middle, but I honestly don't remember. I just remember the, uh, the big container of gum dingers right when you walked in the door there. And unfortunately, as I rolled into town, I noticed that they are about to take it down, guys. I'm so glad I came in just right now to catch this one more time, get a picture of this building one more time, because it's just about to come down. The hammering you hear is them over there getting ready to take the big shell sign down. I can't believe we're about to lose this, man. So right across the street here is the Sparkle Market that we also used to come out to and buy all kinds of like candy and treats and stuff like that. And we'd ride our bikes. And one time my brother and I rode our bikes across the street here, right in front of this gas station. And right about here, my brother dropped his bag of stuff that he bought at the Sparkle Market. And he slammed on his brakes and skidded across. He dropped his bike and ran out to get it. And he started cussing up a storm, and some guy at the store was like, do you talk to your mother that way? And my brother was like, yes. <laughs> Sorry it's so loud out here, guys. They're, they're taking down that sign. So I'm going to wrap this one up, but I just wanted to show you that quick before we go to breakfast because it's about to be torn down. Final look at the Shell Station here in Andover. So this is the causeway here that connects Ohio to Pennsylvania. And all along here, we used to come out with my mom and dad and fish. You can see people over on the right side there fishing. Look at that yellow Corvette. But we used to come down here and uh, cross the causeway from Andover, from Ohio, over into Pennsylvania on our way out to uh, the spillway the Linesville Spillway. Here it is. Welcome to Pennsylvania, right there. Um, but right down here at the, right down here at the bottom of this uh, causeway, there's a little restaurant that I'm going to show you that we used to come out here to have breakfast. And out here on the water, when it would freeze, this is where we would come out to go ice fishing. And I never really liked fishing at all except I loved ice fishing. I don't know why, I think it was just because there was another element to it, like you were out in a little clubhouse on the ice, and uh, you dig a hole in the, in the ice, and then you fish through the hole. It was always so much fun, as opposed to just regular fishing where you just pop a chair and sit there and wait. So, <laughs> so right down here at the bottom of the causeway, this little brown building coming up on the right side here, babe. This is the little bit. And whenever my dad would bring us here, we would, uh, we'd cross the causeway, and on the way out here, um, we'd be messing with my dad, because he's so corny. You see the sign up there that says the little bit. And we'd be like, how much syrup do you want in your pancake? And he'd be like, just a little bit. <laughs> and we do that like the entire ride down here to the little bit. So from what I remember, this is where we would pull in, right at the bottom of the causeway here. And this is where we would go uh, ice fishing. 
And this is one reason why I love the movie Grumpy Old Men so much. Because they ice fish. <laughs> and it just reminds me of this area whenever I watch that movie. Okay, yeah, so you can see people fishing out here. And right back here, there's this dock. And it reminds me of the dock on Grumpy Old Men. Um, right behind Chuck's bait shop. Like the bait shop would have been like right around here. And then there was the dock that went out onto uh, the ice. Although here, you can see it's like a small waterway that comes out before it actually opens up to the lake. So this is just another thing that I love so much about this area here. And here, we have a little bench we can uh -huh. sit on. <laughs> so I would have to ask my dad to make sure, but from what I can remember, this is where we would come out to ice fish, right out here in this area. It was always so much fun. I absolutely got my love for small town movies um, from living here, from the couple of years that I lived here in Andover. It's funny, but standing here, like this cluster of trees kind of sparks a memory I mean, I don't know what that memory is, but I'm just saying it looks so familiar to me. So it's probably just that these trees have been here so long that uh, that I associate with them. You know, I mean, it's a pretty particular cluster of trees right there. Hey guys, we are starting this video right here at the Little Bit with delicious pancakes and sausage. Look at that. Oh, and you got eggs too. <laughs> Let me know how it is there, babe, when you have a bite. <laughs> <laughs> like fighting with the pancake. Mm. They're so big and thick. Mm. I got them slathered up with butter and syrup. Good? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I definitely have to get a little bit keychain. Yep. Holy crap, guys, look at this. There are cattails outside the front of the little bit. I have not seen cattails for so long. What in the world? Look at this one. Hold on, let me pull it out here. Look at this, what the heck? <laughs> That's so funny. Cattails remind me of uh, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Disney's Legend of Sleepy Hollow, where after the Halloween party, Ichabod is riding, and he's so scared because he just heard the story of the Headless Horseman, and he hears what he thinks is a horse, and it's actually cattails, like, blowing in the wind, beating on a log of wood. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure this is a different sign from when, when I was a kid, you know, it was still called the little bit, but it's a totally different sign. But I love this big thing out here, this giant map that they have. Like here's Andover and all Andover is, is the square. I mean, it, you know, just a little circular area around there with houses and that. But here's the causeway that we just came across and, uh, a little bit right down here. And then here's the Linesville Spillway where we were yesterday to watch the uh, the ducks walk on the back of the fish, the big carp. All right, we're heading right back over the causeway. There's the Welcome to Ohio sign right there. I knew they would all perk up when I pulled up here. Look at all these seagulls out here. This is hilarious. Okay, so this is Pima Tuning Lake. And if you watch Wally's channel, Wally B26, You've seen he's actually been out here and made some videos. And I believe he did a drone video here. And right over here is the beach. Now, there's a couple of beaches down here, but I think right over here is where he was when he was filming one of his videos. This is a huge lake. It's all on this side and then across the road over there too, but there's nowhere to pull off on that side. On the left here, you see this house that we're passing. That actually used to be a place where you could stop and buy um, bread to go feed the fish at the Linesville Spillway. And like you'd just walk in the door and I think you'd just leave money there, like you'd leave a donation and grab a couple loaves of bread. And there was tons of bread in there. And I think what it was was like the day old bread that they got um, from the stores when they were done with it. Okay, so we're making our way into town, but I wanted to stop and show you this first. This video started with us having covered bridge pizza last night. 
best pizza on the face of the earth, hands down. And this is it right here. This actually is a legit covered bridge, or at least it used to be. And uh, this is it, this is covered bridge pizza. This is the same sign. And this pizza, guys, I'm telling you, if you ever come down here, you've got to come over here and get some. It is so absolutely delicious. Okay, yeah, it's after 11 o'clock, so I can at least step in here and show you the dining room. So this is it right here. This is the Covered Bridge Pizza Parlor. About every time we've come in here, we've sat like probably the third table up, about right here under that giant wreath. I love this place. It is the best pizza you've ever had in your life. I'm telling you, you've got to come in here if you ever come to Andover, Ohio. And it looks exactly the same as it did when I was here when I was a kid. Look at the size of this wreath. How hilarious is that? And my brother actually, for my birthday one year, got me a covered bridge shirt. And I have it saved. I think it's a black one. And uh, if they had my size right now, I would buy another one, but unfortunately, they don't. So that's that, guys. That is the Covered Ridge Pizza. Again, if you ever come to Andover, you have got to get some of this pizza. Best ever. It's funny to be stopping at places like this, but I have little <laughs> stories to tell you from all over this town. Just a little ways up from the Covered Bridge Pizza down there, we have what used to be a Lawson's over here. And then right over here is Herbert's Pharmacy. And I remember going in there and looking at the Halloween costumes. And it was the kind of Halloween costumes that was like a thick plastic like thing you draped over your body. And then a plastic mask that you just put on with a strap in the back. And it always split. The mask always split. And you always ended up like getting poked by the mask and everything. And if you stepped on it, that mask was absolutely toast. But that's what I remember about Herbert's Pharmacy over there. Now this right here used to be a Dairy Queen. And all they did was take down the old sign and put up the Dairy Oasis sign, which they actually have pretty good stuff there anyway. Um, this over here is the United States Post Office. Now, I don't remember exactly. In my mind, this building right over here was a Goodwill, but I, that might be wrong. It might have been this one over here because I seem to remember all the uh, the windows over there on that coin laundry. We'll zoom in a little bit. I think that was a Goodwill. And when we lived here, my dad bought us all hats from there one time, and uh, me and my brother got lice from those hats. Ooh. Now I also noticed right across the street, there's Cassiola Feed. Now I'm gonna show you another building in a little bit, but we used to go to a Cassiola feed supply here in Andover and uh, we would get things like little ducks and geese and chickens and we would keep them as pets. Okay, so right here on the right is Chestnut Street. This is the street they lived on. Let's go to see my house first. Let's go see where we lived. It's right up the street here. We used to ride our bikes all up and down this street here all around town and we're gonna to get to town in just a few minutes here but I gotta show you my house so this is the street that I lived on from the age of like 8 to 10 I think it was so we were here for about three years and this is the house we lived in right here there's nobody home I just knocked on the door we're gonna make it quick I really wish I could go up there and film bits and pieces of the house because I have so many different memories from around here but when you're filming somebody else's house, it's just way too awkward. So I don't want to do that and they're not home um, or else I would get permission to do that. Um, one thing we'll, I'll tell you is these uh, apartments right back here, we had friends who lived there, uh, Tyler and Josh. We had a fire in the backyard one time and Josh came up here when we were in the house with a stick that was burning and tried to catch the house on fire. And then the apartment in the front on the left was his apartment and Tyler was right beside him. And um, Josh was obsessed with chewing Copenhagen because his brother was a little older and he chewed Copenhagen. So they would tear apart their bikes all the time and he wanted to play bike shop. So we'd play bike shop on the front porch and Josh would always be like, and I chew Copenhagen. Like he'd always throw in that little tidbit right there. I'm fixing my bike and I chew Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this house over here, we had a neighbor, her name was Michelle McCormick, and there used to be a gigantic tree out here, and they cut it down one year, and there was these giant stumps, 
and she had a big stuffed banana and this banana was probably like six feet long so we she we saw her leave and we were in the house over here in the kitchen <laughs> and we ran outside and we took the banana and laid it down and we put a bunch of those big stumps on top of the banana <laughs> <laughs> and then we went back in the house and as you look towards the back here you'll see this little window right there that was the kitchen so when we saw Michelle come back home we were all huddled up around that window and we were looking out here and we were watching and she went in the house and then we heard her say to her mom wait I gotta get my banana and she ran outside and when she <laughs> when she saw it she goes ah my banana <laughs> I just love this place. There's so many hilarious little memories like that. Now, let's just come over here for another minute. He's got another story on the other side of the house. So this is the neighbor on the other side of the house. And you can see how the, uh, the ground here, babe, if you look back there, you see how the ground is kind of like a divot. And it rained so hard one year that we pulled out my dad's canoe and put it in there and we'd get in the canoe and run and jump in and uh, just ride along that water there in that divot between the houses. Okay, so switch sides with me here, babe. So we had a pet turkey. Yep, that, wait, a pet, a turkey. A pet turkey, a pet. We, had, we used to have pet ducks and a turkey well, or ducks two. Well, ducks I can see. And chickens. Okay, and here. Yeah, anything that we could buy from Cassiola Feed and Supply across the street from the house. And I'll okay. show you where that's at in a little bit. Okay. But we had this pet turkey, and when he got huge, he would do what we called big turkey. Um, which basically he looked like, well, you know, when a turkey like gets tries to strut, and he spreads out his wings, mm -hmm. and he gets like huge, that was big turkey. So our house that I just showed you is just like three houses down that way. And right up here is this bank. And one year, <laughs> my friend uh, Timmy came, Timmy Romanowski, he came flying down to our house on his bike. And he's like, there's a vulture at the bank. And, and we came down here and looked and our turkey was up on one of these posts over here doing the big turkey. <laughs> okay, and at the same bank, it snows really bad here because we're very close to Lake Erie. So we get that lake, lake effect snow. So the plows would come through here and they would push up all the snow and there would just be huge mounds of snow all along this thing here. And uh, we would come out here and just like build forts in the snow, just dig holes through the snow and stuff like that. And that was, that's just a fun memory that I have from this area right here too. Okay, so now we are in the parking lot of an apartment building called the Westmar Apartments. This is right behind the house that I grew up in, right over there. So I have a couple of stories back here. Um, for one, the, uh, the garage right there. Man, I just wish I could go in that house and look around. Anyways, so the garage right there, that's where we used to keep our animals that we would get at the Cassiola Feed and Supply. The chickens, the ducks, the turkey, any kind of animals we got, we kept over there. It used to be a big tree over there and there was a sandbox. And uh, back here where you see these big trees, there actually was all kinds of brush and it was just, it was a lot more full over here. Now, this big one right here, this one right here is where I got the worst case of poison ivy I ever had in my entire life. I had poison ivy from head to toe. I was puffed up. I looked like, like a cabbage patch kid. And we used to go to this place called Cook Forest in Pennsylvania to camp, and we would stay in these cabins. They didn't have any running water. They just had a uh, like a pump outside where you pump to get your water, and it was really cold water. I may have told you about this before. I don't oh, remember. Yeah. But I even had this, uh, this poison ivy between my fingers. Between my fingers and I would sit here going like this to scratch. And all that would do is tear open those blisters and it would spread and it would get worse and worse. So at, uh, at Cook Forest, I would go outside middle of the night, everybody else is sleeping. So I had this bowl and I would go outside to that, uh, to that pump and I would pump that cold water, bring the bowl in and I remember sitting at the table in there just with my hands in that cold water, just that was the only relief that I could get from that poison ivy on my hands. It was absolutely crazy. And we had um, aloe vera. Somebody told us that aloe vera was good for poison ivy. So we would get, you know, aloe vera 
leaves, I guess they're called, mm -hmm. break them open and cut them in half. Mm -hmm. And I had aloe vera, that slimy, nasty aloe vera, head to toe to try to deal with it. Okay, so while she was just filming that, she's backing up here and I said, watch out, you're gonna bump into that car. And she says, I was trying not to get the trash can in the, in the scene. But lo and behold, I have a story about that trash can, which is mainly why we're in this parking that lot. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, there's our house. There's the lot where we were trying to build our tree house and I got the poison ivy at that giant tree. And right over here is this dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a different dumpster. The one that was here uh, back in the day was a lot bigger and it had steel lids. This here is uh, just plastic. So yeah, I don't, it wouldn't have the same effect, but. <laughs> okay, we were just such hoodlums running around here terrorizing the neighborhood that it was me and my brother I don't know if my sister ever did this with us or not, but it was me and my brother and uh, and Tyler. Tyler Northrop is his name. And we would be up here at the house and we would sneak back here and then we would come to the giant trash can here with the metal lids and we would slam those lids a bunch of times and then hide behind it. And there was somebody right up in that window there, this older lady who would look down and she'd like start peeking and getting so mad. And we just did that over and over and what? over. <laughs> what aggravator you must have been. Okay, and then one more thing from back here. Over here, around this corner, we're gonna see if any of it still exists. There used to be tons and tons of slate. And my sister would come back, come back here and she'd pick up the big pieces of slate and she would paint pictures on them. And I think we actually still have one of those pictures, or my parents do at least. But it was always in a giant pile back here. We would like break it up and throw it like Chinese stars. And Yeah, there is. There's poison ivy back here. Um, but I just want to look. I'll bet you anything if we got up in there we would find some of that slate, I guarantee it. Because a couple years ago, my brother and sister and I were out here and uh, and we came back here and looked and there was still some of that slate there. But uh, but yeah, that's just another thing that I remember from this area, so. And just real quick before we leave this area, to the person who owns that house right now, I'm sorry for filming your house, had to do it. I just had to get some of these shots here though. Um, the lady that owns the house now is a very nice lady. She did let us in one year when we were out here. And we were able to look all around the inside of the house and just so many memories coming back while we were in there. All right, so before we go on, I gotta, I gotta tell you about this in case everybody's wondering. I have a black eye because my granddaughter jumped up to give me a hug when I was visiting and she slammed into my eye here. So I have a black eye. Yeah. And in my, <laughs> my nose, I have skin ripped off because a lot of times I use those nose strips at night because I use a CPAP, so I have to have those on. And when you peel them off, it really hurts. It's like duct tape, and it tore off a bunch of skin. So that's the story of the nose and the eye. Yeah, I have not been abusing him. I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're on our way back down Chestnut Street, the street where I just showed you guys the house. There are so many stories I could tell you about this place. We used to camp out on that front porch. We'd put all of our blankets and pillows and everything out there and just sleep out on the front porch. And one night I wanted to watch Children of the Corn and then sleep out there by myself. And my mom was like, you have no idea what you're doing. And then I got too scared and I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many places I want to show you. Um, we're going to have to start right here. This used to be the elementary school. As we pull up here between all the buses, you can see there is no longer a school here. It was torn down quite some time ago, but like the front entrance would have been directly through those two trees right there. Right through, like the front of the school would have been right directly between these two big trees here from what I remember. It was a pretty big school. Now, this is the very first place that me and my brother and my sister came to when we were kind of exploring Andover like immediately when we moved into the house up there. So right over here is where there would have been a playground. This was actually, uh, I believe this was paved over here, which it still kind of is, yeah. Okay, yeah, that was all paved. They may have torn some of it up, but um, this was all a playground right here. We were riding our bikes around here. You can see this fence off in the distance. 
and that house immediately in front of us, there was a guy there, I'm not going to say what his name is, but um, there was a guy that lived there, um, a kid, you know, a kid we were going to be going to school with. I think he was a little bit older than us. And we are in an area here um, where there's a lot of buckeye and walnut trees. We're in Ohio. So if you've ever seen a walnut when it comes off the tree, it looks like a lemon. It's like this big thing, only it's like lime green, and it just, it looks, it looks like a lime, basically. Rock hard. So right off the bat, we're making friends here in Andover, because we're over here playing on the stuff of the playground, and a guy over here starts throwing those things at us <laughs> for no reason whatsoever. We immediately start fighting with him. And he threw one, and it flew over here and hit me right in the eye, I believe. I think it hit me in the eye. Like, I think it hit me up here, which is funny that I have a black eye right now. And I'm telling this story. I but know. I, I, I was thinking the same yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it hit me right in the eye because I jumped on my bike, flew back home, got in this drawer, and got firecrackers and brought them up here. I don't know what I thought I was going to do with them, but I apparently thought I was going to light the firecrackers and throw them over there. At, I said his name. And I uh, know <laughs> he will know anyway. And um, yeah, I, so I mean, we took off, but we were enemies with that guy, you know, from the get go. So <laughs> we made enemies with him. And then uh, this is the same location where I made enemies with another kid. And then he became my best friend in this area. His name is Jeremy Grady. Jeremy, if you're watching, I love you. You're awesome. So right here, here is the story of how I met Jeremy Grady. There was like some picnic tables over here um, on this paved area. And I don't know, I must have rode my bike down here and I think I was alone. My brother might have been with me. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I was alone. And Jeremy was over here and he was on the picnic table and he had a bike chain. And he was over here like swinging it around. And he said to me, you want to kiss Jody? And I'm like, who's Jody? This guy's sister or what? <laughs> and he <laughs> Jody was the bike chain. <laughs> and he took the bike chain and he swung it around and he threw it. And it like went across this parking lot here. And I don't know why, but to Jeremy, that was so awesome mm -hmm. that he threw Jody across the parking lot. And I honestly don't remember what happened after that. I was probably like, okay, it jumped on my bike and took off. Then we went to school together and he became my best friend. <laughs> yeah, so that's my two very best stories from this area over here. Now, I have one more story um, about this school, the elementary school here. I didn't go to it, but my brother did. So this was the area that the school was, really big school, and they used to have like a carnival every year. Best pizza. Oh my gosh, guys, let me just tell you, the three best pizzas I've ever had in my life are from Andover, Ohio. Covered Bridge, Fiore and Tony's, and the school pizza, if you can believe it. It was unlike any school pizza I have ever had in my life. It was that rectangular pizza, but there was something about it that was so absolutely delicious, and everybody in the place agreed. So there would be this carnival every year, and that pizza would sell out within... A half an hour, man. If you didn't get in there and get to the cafeteria immediately, you did not get the pizza. So what I remember about this is for the carnival, you'd go in right here. And right out here, they would always have a car that you could pay like 75 cents and beat up with a sledgehammer. <laughs> oh, wow. And then inside the school... Over here to the left, if I'm remembering correctly, that's where, like, there would have been, I guess, the gym. And you'd go in there, and they had the whole carnival set up there. And the carnival was basically just where you would go in and you'd play these little games, you know, toss a beanbag or whatever, and you'd win tickets, and then you'd win little prizes, like those little rubber monsters that go on your finger and tops and stuff like that. But, uh, but that's what I remember about this area. Over here, around the buses, there's actually a baseball diamond. And, uh we had a dog it was a little um cocker spaniel a little cocker spaniel and her name was muffy and <laughs> you can see the uh, the fence over here where that would have been the batter and i remember us taking a walk up here with muffy and muffy took off running and would steal the bases like literally bite the base and run off with it 
And of course, then everybody had to go chasing Muffy and try to get the uh, the bases mm -hmm. back. So, all right, let's move on to the next location here. Okay, so we are literally right down from the school. You can see the buses over there. And over here are baseball diamonds. I never played baseball, but my brother did. Um, I honestly don't recall this right here, but he does. We've been out here before and he said he remembers it. What I remember is back here. Like you can see this girl walking back here. In that area, I was always the entrepreneur, always trying to sell stuff to make money. <laughs> but I had my dad make this thing that I could put around my neck and it would, it was like round right here and it had holes in it where I could put cups. And I went to the dollar store and I bought pop called Lotsa. L-O-T-S-A, lots of pop, three liters of pop. And I would fill those up and I would walk around over there and try to sell that pop during the baseball games. I don't think I ever sold any. I probably drank it all myself, but I tried. Now, I don't know exactly where, but also down here right across from the school somewhere, one of these houses, we had a friend named Timmy and uh, that's where I was introduced to He-Man. Speaking of being an entrepreneur, somewhere right down here, there was a giant field um, that looked like uh, like a, a running track and I was totally into BMX at the time we used to watch BMX bandits all the time when it came on HBO and I actually made uh, tickets to a BMX race that I was planning on having and I sold these tickets for like 15 cents a piece and never had the BMX race <laughs> now right here around this corner also I got a little story that's funny so there was a kid, I cannot think of what his name was, um, but he used to walk home from the school up here that I'm going to show you. And he would walk around that bend there playing his trumpet. And we always, we had this song that we always said it was. And we'd be like, remember that kid? He'd walk around there and he'd be like... <laughs> now right here on the left, guys. So this house I'm talking about right here, my best friend, Jeremy Grady, that I just told you how I met him. And this is his dad, Ron, right here. We used to come down here to this house and we would hang out. So this is the Grady house right here. This is where Jeremy and his brother Travis lived. We used to come down here and hang out all the time. And I remember they had a dog that used to run around right over here. It was a Doberman Pinscher and his name was Sinbad. And Jeremy and Travis used to always tell us that the dog smoked cigarettes. I truly don't remember if we ever actually saw it happen, but that was the story. Right now we are on our way over to this school here. I'm gonna tell you some stories over there in a minute, but first, up this long driveway here, Jeremy's house is just down here and right around the corner. One time me and Jeremy came up here and you see this pond over here. Jeremy told me that it was okay, that we were allowed, he had permission to fish in this pond. And I'm like, all right, so we hopped this fence here, went over, we're fishing in the pond. About two minutes in, I see the owner storming back there, running towards us. And I'm like, what in the world? Because I'm under the impression we're allowed to be there. And I turn around and I look, and Jeremy's already over here halfway over the fence. So I just ran and climbed the fence, and the guy was yelling at us that it was a fully stocked pond, and we weren't allowed to be there. But just another one of my stupid memories. So here it is, guys. Home of the Lakers, Pima Tuning Valley. This is the school where I started school when we first came to Andover. Pima Tuning Valley Primary School. There's the front doors to the school. Right out here is the football field where every day after school we'd see all the kids playing uh, football, practicing and everything. But my first story from the school is from my very first day in fourth grade. Guys, with any luck, these doors will be open. Oh, what a bummer, man. I would love to go in here to tell this story. But anyways, so these are the doors that I went in when I first came to school here, my first day of fourth grade when we first moved to Andover. Now, if you look out here, you can see just how long of a driveway this is, all the way out to the main road there. And then we just drove from my house. So Jeremy's house is right down here. You make a right and you go down there around the corner where the kid played his trumpet. And then all the way down my street to my house. So my first day of school, my mom brings me up, drops me off here. And I go in these doors right here where I had to stand for a little bit. And then they'd take us down the hallway into the cafeteria on the right side of the hall down there. I so wish 
that we could get in here so I could just walk these halls for a few minutes. You can't really see anything down here because of the reflection, but anyway, down that hallway there to the right is where the cafeteria was. And I did not want to be here. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know the school. I didn't know the area. We just moved here. I got in there and sat down in the cafeteria. I see all these kids who know each other and they're talking and having a good time and people are giving me weird looks because I'm the new kid. You know, they don't know who I am. And my anxiety is just like going up and up and up. And finally, I'm just like thinking I could just run out of here and go home. And then I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of the cafeteria, flew down that hallway, out these doors, down the front walk here, and down this entire driveway running at top speed, down around Jeremy's house, around the corner where the guy played the trumpet, and all the way down to my house, and knocked on the door just as my mom got in the house from dropping me off. I have no idea what my plan was gonna be once I got to the house, cause like my mom was really gonna let me stay home. And when she saw me, she's like, what are you doing here? Brought me right back to school. <laughs> okay, one more story quick that I have to tell before we leave the school here. And I'm sure there could be plenty of stories from the school. So right around here, between these two little buildings here is the playground. And this is obviously where we'd come out to recess. So right through here is where my classroom was when I was in fourth grade. It would have been not this room here, but the one that's on the other side of that. These are the doors we would have come out when it was recess. And right here, there was a swing set. And I believe this is where I got my fear of like chains and cables and, and ropes and things, because I have this really weird phobia where I'm like, I get really anxious whenever there's ropes and chains and cables and stuff like that because I feel like they're all gonna twist up around each other or twist around a motor or something spinning or whatever. It's strange, but I think this is where it originated. So right here, there was that swing set and me and my friend were swinging on it and he was going super high. Like, you know when you go so high that the swing jumps and like slams down? That's how high he was going. And then he started twisting himself in the air as he's swinging. And he was saying, twisty do. And I, all I could see was him hitting his head or getting wrapped around one of those bars. It never happened, but I think that's where I got that fear. Let me just see if we can see in this door for a minute here. Yeah, there's the hallway. And to the left would have been, uh, right past those doors that you see here closest to us, to the left would have been the pod of uh, four classrooms and mine would have been like, you know, all the way in and to the right. My teacher was Mrs. Pallick, and then there was Mrs. Uh, Stringfellow, who had a paddle that she called Mrs. Stingfellow. And then there was Mrs. Green, who I only remember because I really liked her. And <laughs> I don't remember who the other person was. I just remember always going in there and looking at Mrs. Green on my way to my classroom. Okay, so now we are out front of the Westmar Apartments. And what I remember about this area was my sister sitting right over here among all these Buckeyes that had fallen off one of those trees over there. And she would draw pictures of the neighborhood. And I believe one of the things she drew was this house right here, the Andover Victorian house. I'll have to see if she still has that picture. And another thing that she drew that is absolutely close to my heart is this right here, the Andover Public Library. Okay guys, the coolest thing just happened. We just got a full tour of the house, guys. The guy who owns this house is mowing the lawn and he saw us taking a picture and he said, you wanna come in and check it out? And we did. I did not film it, guys. Um, I have a reason and um, I'll talk to you about that later. Okay, so remember, the house where I grew up is right over here. There's the Westmar Apartments and right down that drive right there across the street. And here is the library, Andover Public Library. We used to come over here with a wagon and fill it up with books, guys. Let's go in here and take a little look around and see just how it looks compared to how it was in, uh, you know, like what, 1982, three, whatever. The smell coming in the door is exactly the same. Ooh, and they got good air on in here too. So here's the front door, guys. And you've got library down this way and library down this way. You've got these partitions here and then more library back this way. I used to come over this way here, down one of these aisles, 
and I would get uh, drawing books. I guarantee my brother looked at this book when we were in here. Hunters in the Sky, A Visual Guide to World War II Aircraft. Okay guys, this is exactly what I was looking for over here, and it is located in almost the same area as it would have been back in the day. Here, this kind of stuff right here, Norman Rockwell's America. I 100% would have looked at that. Um, here's another Norman Rockwell right here. But this is more of what I would, would have been over here looking at. Complete drawing from life. Stuff like that, like drawing books that showed you how to draw people and hands and all kinds of stuff like that. How to paint and draw animals. Yeah, this is all the kind of stuff that I would have got when I was in here. How to draw and paint fish and game. Okay, let's move on down through here over to the kids section because there's more drawing books I would have got down here that I have to show you. Ed Emberley's drawing books, and it was like the big purple drawing book, the big green drawing book, stuff like that. The last time I was in here, they actually had one sitting up on top of the shelf. And if they still have them, they're going to be in here somewhere because I see Draw 50 Endangered Animals. Oh, we definitely would have checked these things out several times. 50 holiday decorations. There's a pumpkin. Boat, ship, truck. I bet you I check these out every week, guys. 50 buildings and other structures. Yep, Lee J. Ames. Oh my gosh, I remember that. Yeah, all these drawing books we got all the time. And surprisingly, I don't see any Ed Emberley books in here, but they used to have a whole bunch of them. And the other thing that I used to get here all the time was videotapes. Now they have DVDs, but they used to have VHS. Yeah, they have tons of DVDs now and no VHS, but I used to get Back to the Future and Karate Kid here all the time. Okay, so right in front of us here is the Andover United Methodist Church. This is the whole reason we lived here. My dad was a preacher and we moved around a lot because of that. And this time it just happened to land us in Andover. So this is the church where we used to attend. And uh, you can see over here is where they're tearing down my gas station. Which if you remember, that's Chestnut Street right there. And that's where I lived, right down that street. So we would basically walk to church every Sunday. Now they've built onto the church since. It's actually pretty big now, but that part you're looking at back there did not exist. This was the driveway to the church right here. And I remember <laughs> one year, or at one point, my brother lost a G.I. Joe backpack. He had a G.I. Joe guy named Zartan. <laughs> and my brother lost the backpack to Zartan. So he had my dad up in front of the church in the middle of the service say, as you're leaving service today, keep an eye out for the G.I. Joe backpack. And somebody actually found the backpack. <laughs> and I believe they found it like right over here, which used to be right outside the door that went in there. And if I'm thinking correctly, which yes, here it is. This part right here, you can see there used to be a door there. And right outside that door, is where they found that backpack. How hilarious is that? Yeah, so we're gonna go around the front here. And uh, I know the doors are open back there because we were talking to a lady earlier who was over here. But we're gonna try to go into the front doors, which is the way that we always took when we went to church. All right, let's see if these are open. Moment of truth. No? Aw. Uh, I didn't think it would be. What a bummer. Well, we can still see, wait a minute. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, yep. Oh, and there's a chair right there. Yeah, so this right here, guys, um, we're, we're actually coming over here first because there's somebody here that I think we can go inside and see the inside here. This is Fellowship Hall. This used to just be referred to as the Youth Center when I was here. And uh, hopefully we can go in here. Yes, all right. Nice and cool in here too. Holy crap, look at this. This is still on the wall. I remember that one from when I was here when I was a kid. Yeah, guys, so this is, well, like I said, what was the youth center back then. I don't know if that's actually what it really was, but that's what we referred to it as. Here's the kitchen. Oh my gosh, I remember <laughs> having lots of stuff in here, eating in here and amazing. And this, and this little stage up here, for some reason, me and my brother, we love that stage up there. 
let's just go take a look at it real quick here. I mean, and it's really not that big of a deal. It's just a couple steps up and it's a stage, but I don't know. You know, I kind of live on a stage nowadays, so maybe that explains it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's amazing being in here. All right, we gotta go upstairs. I haven't been upstairs for 30 years. Maybe 40 years almost. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm. Okay, yes. I remember coming out here. You go up these steps here. And from what I remember, oh, I remember these floors, definitely. <laughs> and up in here is like a gym. It even smells exactly the same. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. Look at this. It's so much smaller to me now as an adult, but like as a kid, we used to come up here and throw the basketballs around. I bet you anything, it's the exact same net hanging there. We used to come up here and roller skate. Oh my gosh, babe, this is amazing to see this. And to smell it, it just, it smells exactly the same. You know, my dad was preacher at a lot of uh, churches. And the attics always had this kind of smell, like a musty smell. How amazing, man. Look at you in that chair. <laughs> but yeah, how amazing is this? Wow. And it's funny because, like, to you, it's probably just simply a musty gym. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, like, the smell, everything is just so, I don't even know what to call it, nostalgic, I guess. Yeah, I remember coming up here like it was yesterday. So crazy. I swear my eye gets blacker by the minute. Anyways, yeah, so we're inside the church now, and none of this used to exist. There's a huge gym through there. This is all a big place. Sunday school rooms all down here. None of that existed. Up through here is the part of the church that was here when I was a kid. Okay, so we're gonna go on in here. And I got a story to tell you in here. These right here are the acolyte uh, sticks or whatever. This is what we would use. These exact ones right here. I remember everything about these. This is what we would use to go up through the aisle Sunday morning and light the candles. And afterwards, you use this bell to put them out. Look, we even have duck friends over here. Okay. <laughs> you need to pray for this story. <laughs> okay, so when I went to church here, things were a little different. Uh, this was not here, this area. I mean, of course, we had the window there. We had this window here. But up here is where, like, this stage area would have been because that's where my dad would stand to preach. And, of course, we had all the wooden pews out here. You know, a pew is like the long seats that go all the way down. You just slide in. And there's, like, Bibles in the back of the seats. And they would have all been facing up this way towards this window here. Now, one story that comes to mind. <laughs> My dad was in, uh, I think it was the Easter cantata, where my dad was playing Jesus in the Easter cantata. And you got all the rows of seats back here that are, again, facing up towards that way. So up there is the stage. And while we're practicing, um, they had, I don't even remember what I was doing in it. I was probably part of like a choir or something. And while we're practicing, the lady that was, um, you know, directing us, I guess, she had us come all the way back here. We're standing back here waiting for our cue to go up. And one of the kids starts, like, kicking. And he's like, how high can you kick? And just as she says, okay, here's your cue, you know, whatever she did that was our, was our cue to go up there, I kicked my leg as high as I possibly could, and it yanked my other leg out from under me, and I flew up and slammed 
on the floor and she was so furious with me. <laughs> but this is the story of all stories. We're the preacher's kids. <laughs> We're here for like a Christmas tree trimming party or something. The tree was being put up like right back here in the center. Now up here, there's nothing. They've totally rebuilt the upper here. But this used to be a balcony that went all the way around like a horseshoe. And there was, uh, there was Sunday school rooms up there all around the outside of the horseshoe. So my brother and I came down here with my dad to do this. And my mom was here too. Everybody was. They're all over here decorating the Christmas tree in the middle of the church. My brother and I grabbed a film projector and we went upstairs into one of the Sunday school rooms. We're up there fiddling around with this uh, film projector trying to watch these films. And I'm not gonna use any names, but a couple of older boys came up and it was right in this area over here. They came up and they started bullying us around. And they like, I think the one took my brother's hat or something. And so my brother's tussling with him in the room there and he's like, Nathan, kick him in the face. So I did. <laughs> I just was like, okay, and I kicked him in the face as hard as I could, which he got furious, and then his friend jumped in. They both grabbed us. They dragged us out right up here, and they were trying to throw us over the balcony, and I'm just beating the heck out of this kid. I punched him in the face, which made him even more mad, and so we were all just going nuts, and all the people down here trying to decorate the tree, they're like, what is going on? And my dad comes bolting upstairs and rips us apart, took us home. It was absolute chaos. So the question just was, was I punished for that? And I'm sure I was, but I don't remember that because that wasn't the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> and look here, here's one of the pews that used to sit in here. And this is what I was talking about, the long wooden ones. And underneath, that's where you'd put like your songbooks and your Bibles. And also on the back of the pew, you'd have a space to put them as well. So I think on that note, I better nix it on the stories of what happened inside this church. Okay guys, now I could be wrong about this one, but I believe that this building right here used to be Cassiola Feed Supply. Now it's Charlie's Auto Parts, but I think this used to be the Cassiola Feed Supply because we used to be able to just come over from our backyard, which was right over that way, come straight by the apartments there across the street, and here was Cassiola, and we would buy our little chickens and ducks and turkeys and stuff like that and have new pets. And anybody in the comments, if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me. But I think that was it. Okay, guys, it has been a long, tiring day running around Andover. But our tour finally brings us to the town square. And I have so many memories of this area right here. We're just going to basically walk around the middle of it and show you from the inside out things that I can remember. Okay, so I just gave her the rundown, told her about a bunch of the memories from around here, but I'm gonna film them for you guys now as she's out making her own video. So this is the town of Andover. This is the town square. And man, I have so many memories from out here, guys. I'm gonna talk to you about a bunch of these little buildings here and th just, just awesome things that I remember. And we'll just start right here. You see this little white building down here with the overhang. That actually was a bait shop that my dad always used to go to to get bait. This building right here, we used to come down here to get uh, minnows and worms. And this sign, if you look close enough, you can still tell it says Kelly's Bait and Tackle. Just to give you a little bit of help with the location from where my house was, here's the Sparkle Market right here. Then right over here is where I showed you the little building that they're tearing down, the old gas station. And right beside it is where my street was that went up that way. So my house was right up there. We would ride our bikes down around the corner and out here around the square. Now I don't really have any memory of what these first three buildings were, but as you cross over here, the bakery and the China Garden, this actually used to be called the Wagon Wheel Restaurant. For my retail enthusiasts, you can look at that sign right there 
and see that it eventually became a Domino's Pizza. The China Garden is open, but the bakery appears to not be open anymore. But yeah, we used to go down there with my parents all the time to the Wagon Wheel restaurant. And the last thing I ever remember having there was hot chocolate one day when I was down here hunting with my dad and I was bored, so he dropped me and my brother off in town. As we come around this corner here, you'll notice a store right here called Fiori and Tony's Pizza. That pizza shop was like our second favorite pizza shop in the world, man. We would jump on our bikes in the evening and take a spin around town. My sister had a basket on the front of her bike and we would run over there and pick up a pizza from Fiori and Tony's, throw it in that basket and head back home. So as we come over to this side here, you see the community thrift store, which at one point was a Goodwill just a few years ago. However, when I lived here, it was like a D&K store or something like that. And I remember the clothing brand called Jams was hot at that time. And I remember going into the K&D or D&K, whatever it was called, and looking for shorts that looked as close to Jams as possible because we couldn't afford Jams. Just up beside that, we got the Chamber of Commerce, which I honestly don't remember what it was back in the day, but that red building right there used to be Lois and Bob's newsroom. That's where we would go in and we'd get all kinds of candy. And if you guys remember Garbage Pail Kids, that's where I got my Garbage Pail Kids and Wacky Packs. And best of all, tickets to the street fair, which took place once a year right here on the square. And this place would be packed with all kinds of carnival rides and games. And I remember over here at one point, they had like a makeshift arcade set up. And I remember playing Kung Fu Master for hours. And then somewhere right over here, they would always have a phone pole that was greased. I mean, they took like Crisco or something and they greased the heck out of that pole, bottom to top. And they would put like a hundred dollar bill on top and people would try to climb the pole to win a hundred dollars. So beside uh, Lois and Bob's right there is the Andover Diner. And look, the original sign is still on the top. We ate there so many times and like over the years after we left Andover, my dad would bring us back here to go hunting. And for breakfast, we always went into the Andover Diner. Oh, this is kind of funny. Okay, between the Chamber of Commerce and the Community Thrift Store, you see that alleyway right there. My brother and I were down here one day and we were gonna take a shortcut through that alley. And we started going and I looked up and I was like, a dog. Like I stopped dead in my tracks because I saw a dog. So we turned around and booked it out of there. On the end here, you see what is now the West End Barbecue. That was actually a uh, bakery, Paul's Bakery. And let me tell you guys, it smelled so good. The, the smell of all those baked goods would just waft throughout Andover. It was so delicious. Around the corner from there, right over here we have Barb's Restaurant, which is another one that we used to eat at all the time. That restaurant right there reminds me of the little diner at the beginning of the movie Children of the Corn. Okay, so Barb's is right there, Barb's Restaurant. And this building right here, one year, there was like a two by four that was connected to the side of the building, sticking out from the side of the building over the sidewalk. Over here beside the Andover Diner, I just told you that was uh, Lois and Bob's newsroom, the one that says the Village Tobacco. We used to love to turn the sign around in the window that said open to close. So we did that one day, we turned it around and then we ran around the bend here, down here, and my brother wasn't paying attention and he ran his head right into that two by four that was sticking out here, knocked out. And beside it is the Showplace Theater. Now, I don't remember what it was called back in the day, but that little theater right there is the very first movie theater where I saw my very first movie alone by myself without any parents or anything. And it was Karate Kid part two. I went back two nights in a row to see it because I was so stoked. And I just remember eating popcorn and Reese cups. Now I'm kind of hazy on what these two stores here were as well as this one over here, or, you know, it looks like that was actually three stores at one point. I do remember that one of these was the Country Clothier, and I believe that it was this one over here. And I just remember going in there and getting uh, those kangaroos shoes with the pockets and looking at the BB guns, because they had a 760 Pump Master 
that we went in there all the time to look at because we were so psyched. And then Tyler got one and we were so jealous. Andover Bank over here is the very first place I ever had a savings account. Wouldn't it be cool if I looked that up and found out that that little savings account I had, I never actually closed and it has like blossomed into $10,000 or something. And the final memory before we take off guys is from this lot right over here where there is a brand new shell station. It was torn down long ago now, but there used to be a little building right there that was the very first place that I ever rented VHS tapes. We didn't have a VCR, we just couldn't afford one. So we'd have to go down there to rent a VCR and we could always rent a couple videos that we wanted. And for me, it was always Goonies and Explorers. So that's it guys, believe me, there are tons more stories I could tell you from this area. Um, but we got to hit the road, man. It is so hot out here. We have been out here all day trekking around Andover and we are exhausted. So we're going to call it a day on this. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of the town where I sort of grew up <laughs> and, uh, yeah, stay tuned. God only knows where we're going next. And guys, I just have to show you real quick. It's been kind of crazy running around all day, filming all my memories and everything at the same time as one of those memories was being torn down right before my eyes. And there it is, just a few short hours ago, they were starting to tear this down and now it is all gone. That sucks, man, but I am so glad that I got here right before they did it so I could see it standing one more time. Even the shell sign is down, so. There you go, Rip Shell Station with the Chuppa Chups and Gum Dingers. People always told me I need someone.